Mr. Graham, there was a uh, battle of early heavyweights in the championship this week. Yes, there was. And uh, someone surprising won, and somebody unsu- uh, very surprisingly did not win. Yes. And what's even funnier is that it's going to make Newcastle people get all kinds of like feelings about it. Well, they're going to be half excited, half disappointed. Yeah. We'll see. And then Pompey's just doing what Pompey's been doing, which is carrying on. Dead even. Let's start the show. <laughs> in the land of Bowie, Maryland. Bread to be a fan of fucking Everton. Punch you in the eye and drink your rye. Sam Houston. Sam Houston? Arsenal fans have another Sam. Right AA, the fucking Gooner Graham. Stuff of a lord. Straight and short, Sam Graham. Sam Graham. Fucking United! Fucking United! Hello, and welcome to DU Does EFL, a beef brief biased recap. Of uh, the rest of English. A beefy brief. I'm keeping it fucking going. Of the rest of English football, as told by two common American schmucks. I'm your host, Sam Houston, and across the way from me, waiting for every verbal slip that I could have, but wasn't around for my real slip this weekend, hey, hey. is Mr. <laughs> Samuel Graham. How you doing there, bud? Uh, not too bad, Bear. How are you? Just keep the beef on slinging, buddy. <laughs> yeah, trying my best. Trying my best. And of course, on the ones and twos, we have producer Mel. How are you doing? Moo. What? <laughs> We're recording at the DU Public House just outside the nation's capital. You can check us out wherever you get your podcasts. And of course, streaming live every single Monday night. And it sounds like YouTube is the place where all the party is happening. Uh, so, apparently, it's also on Mel's circular system. So, <laughs> should you want to chat with us, there is many ways that you can. Mr. Graham, tell the good people how they can get in touch. Uh, it's at the football show and all the social media, of course, and do you football show gmail.com to get in touch via email. Very good. Um, we <laughs> are drinking, much happy pen. we are drinking the exact same shit. Uh, and Mel is smoking the exact same shit, just more <laughs> of it. Um, so let's go ahead and get right into it. As I, uh, mentioned at the beginning, Sam, uh, an early season battle saw, um, at the top saw Sunderland beat Burnley one nil. And that now has them. And Watford as the only two 3-0 and teams at the top of the table. The issue I have with this is I don't think either one of them is going to be able to sustain that, obviously. Yeah, I tend to agree. But it's the championship and you never know, right? Some people have... This is one of those leagues where the best of the league can compete in the Prem. Mm-hmm. The worst in the league are League One players that couldn't be sold. Right. So you've got this weird swath of... Very elite talent and very, you know, kind of third tier talent. Um, Couple that with the fact that Burnley started off on fire the first two games of the season and looked like they were going to go right where they took off when they were in the championship two seasons ago, which was beating the ever-loving shit out of everyone. So let's let's start there then. Mm -hmm. Uh, Did you see the uh, post-match with Scott Parker? Uh, No, I did not. Uh, Good, because they asked him what goals he had set for the club when he came in and what his plan was, and he said there were no goals. I just didn't set any targets. Really? Yeah, we, you know, there's there was a lot right here, and we just want to keep that going. Okay. That's should inspiring be words. Win, should be at least win the fucking league. Inspiring words from win the, the league, manager. Get promoted again. From the guy that wears 1,700-pound cardigans yeah. on the side of the pitch, there could be a bit more of a uh, cohesive, coherent, and, uh, uh, you know, much just message <laughs> much like a supermodel really easy to look at not a lot going on upstairs Uh-oh. <laughs> ah, Uh-oh. leads got their first win of the season uh finally beating, fuck <laughs> beating wednesday on friday two to nil that was oh, just fun to say it always <laughs> happens it's great to we say we do it every time <laughs> whenever wednesday plays we say wednesday on the day that they played it just makes us feel happy yes, doesn't it it does feel good uh yeah i mean Fantastic um, 
for Leeds. They they needed something because those first two games of the mm-hmm. season were just, you know, you had the barn burner with Portsmouth, mm-hmm. and then last week losing, obviously. No, I draw. draw. Uh, it was another draw. Yeah, yeah, you're right. It was nil-nil, though. Yeah. Yeah, it was. I wanted to shoot uh, myself. That's Aronson, why I thought. Because everyone scored. that lost, watched it say I'm lost yeah. that day. Aronson, uh, Aronson scored, and uh, why am I forgetting his name? The kid from that w- went to United that came from Swans. That's now with uh, them. I don't remember. Daniel that. James. Daniel James was the other oh, goal Oh, yeah. All right. Yeah, so that was their two goal scores. And honestly, that's going to be a lot of their goal scoring this year with the uh, with the pieces that they've lost. Yes, I, I would tend to believe so because I don't think they're going to be able to, to pick anybody up. They claim they're in financial hardship even though they were in the Premier League last <clears> season. <throat> But two they had a, ago. they had a mass. Oh, you're right. Yeah, that they didn't. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's right. Because yeah. they didn't get promoted. They didn't get promoted. It all just blends together, Sam. At some point, yeah. um, but they um, they are in financial hardship because they have a load of had a load of massive Premier League contracts still on the books. Yep. Uh, so they can't really bring anyone in, despite the sales of of some of their best talent. Really, yeah. over the last. 10 days. Yeah, they got to manage the books. That's mm-hmm. exactly what they have to do. And that's the problem with the parachute payment. It's great. You get that parachute payment. You got to figure out a way to get right the fuck back up, though. Correct. And also next season, uh, the parachute payment goes down after this is the last season at 42 million. I think it goes down mm-hmm. 37. I think I got heard. it. So you get five million less. Uh, uh, so Pompey yeah. continued their drawing ways. They drew two to two at Middlesbrough. So a couple of the, you know what? But Mike all Harrison not having teams. a great time there all of a sudden. Yeah, he started off really well at Middlesbrough. Yeah, it's all decent teams, you know. I mean, Luton's at the bottom of the table right now, but Luton's a team that just came down from the Premier League. Leeds is a team that competed to get promoted. And Middlesbrough is somebody who's always in and around it. So for, for Pompey... This is fine. Yeah, you know but you, especially when Luton's goalkeeper thinks he plays rugby. Yeah, very true. That it's, didn't help Luton at all. <laughs> what what I think uh, Pompey needs to make sure they do is like they're going to eventually play somebody like Plymouth. They need to beat them, right? Like absolutely. That's when they're going to start to get those matches when they play Wednesday. Like these are the teams well, that uh, need to right. Beat. Exactly. And I, I told you about them when we spoke about Arsenal. Right. It say we lost the league at Villa. That was the one that confirmed it. The right. league was lost against Fulham and West Ham. Right, 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 precisely. You have to beat the teams that you're supposed to be in and around. And for Pompey being in League One for so long mm-hmm. and then coming up, it's going to be Plymouth that you have to beat. It's going to be, yeah. I know they went down, but like the, the likes of like Huddersfield Town and, and those sorts of teams that are in that you know 19th, 18th through 24th realm, that's who you have to win the games against. Yeah. Now, um, Pompey is amongst uh, several com- um, teams that have not lost yet. So you have them. Hull City is also at um, three draws, uh, no wins, no losses. Of course, uh, Leeds is on one win, two draws. And then you have, obviously, at the top of the table, you have uh, both um, uh, Watford and uh, Sunderland, both yep. on uh, three and oh. So three and oh, yep. now the bottom of the table sees uh, some people that you wouldn't normally expect to see down there. Millwall, Luton and Cardiff. Uh, they uh, currently occupy the bottom three spots, but everybody on, in the league has a point. Everyone's gotten at least a draw. Okay. So the entire it's better league, than Everton and Wolves. You and it's the parody of that league too, though. It, but it's right. honestly it's the parody of the championship. It's a everyone gets some points. I, I would expect Millwall to get out of it. Obviously, I would expect they're, it too. they're they're not usually in this position. Really, Cardiff. I find less convincing. I, mm-hmm. I their finances are an issue, have been yeah. for ages, uh, basically since Neil Warnock was in charge. Their finances were mm-hmm. were weren't the best. Um, but yeah, Luton, you got to figure Premier League team coming down. I didn't see a mass exodus from that club either. No. Um, so you'd imagine they'd they'd find a way to be They'll safe. Figure it out. <laughs> Excuse me, and you'll. We'll we'll see some different teams yeah. occupy the bottom. The I, other thing you have is the the championship is three thousand games long. So I I would say somebody like uh, Plymouth is already just sitting on the outside of it, and I and I know we have a soft spot for Plymouth, but let's face it, Plymouth is a League One team. That's what they always have been. So probably sophomore jinx, and they'll probably go back down. You would could imagine. be, especially with Wayne Rooney in and, charge. But I would, but I do think, but I do think <laughs> that's in that not regards, going well. But like someone like. I feel like Pompey's going to figure out a way to stay up just because I have a feeling a lot like Sunderland. It took you forever to get out of League One. Now you are out of League One. You are not fucking going back. Yeah. You will make sure you do not go back. You may not make it to the Prem, 
but you ain't going back to fucking League One. That's going to depend on that weird French owner <clears throat> that does up bars for Newcastle mm-hmm. fans. Uh, Stockport just keeps on fucking winning in League One. This time they won 2 nothing over Bristol Rovers. So them, Huddersfield, and Charlton Al- Athletic all uh, got victories and hold serve at 3 0 and 0. But uh, um, Stockport, it's the, you know, they just, they just keep rolling. They're beating teams, beating them convincingly, not giving up goals. I have a feeling Huddersfield will do very, very well. We talked about it last week. It would not surprise me if Huddersfield went straight the fuck back up. Yeah, it, it wouldn't. They're too big of a club now, at, you know, recently being in the prime and everything else uh, with, with all that influx of cash because they weren't one of the teams that signed 150 players right. when they came up either, right? Yeah. Their manager was on not great wages for Premier League managers. So when they sacked him, they didn't have to shell out a shit ton of money. Yeah, precisely. Uh, comparatively. Um, so I think their finances are still fine. Um, they should be able to, to kind of roll the championship, to be honest with you. Uh, I'm sorry, League One, rather, and yeah. get back to the championship. Yeah, I'm, I'm um, excited to see what Stockport does. But if they don't, mm-hmm. they're in fucking trouble. Oh, yeah. Well, that's just like what happened to Reading, what happened to Derby County, what happened to Sunderland, what happened to to Pompey, like what happened to Bolton. All of these teams, like... Like that, if you fall out of the championship, that really changes things because then it's not guaranteed TV money every week. At least but when you're in the championship, there's still some fucking TV. Yeah, money. but with, with Pompey, I mean those those sins were committed while they were a Premier League club. Oh I yeah, mean, yeah. I mean, they, they was, went into administration had no money then. Yeah, precisely. It, it was it was well worse for them because they started the championship season after they went down. They started the championship season with a point deduction. Yeah. Then it was decided. They liquidated the company altogether and had to start a new Portsmouth. Yeah. Technically, Portsmouth were founded in like 2017 or some shit. Yeah. yeah. Or 12 2012. or whatever it was. Yeah. Something like, you know, back in the day is what I'm saying. Right. The, um, you know, you, you'd hope it's not that bad for some of these other teams, really. Uh, agreed, agreed, very much. Um, now, uh, Wrexham uh, moved into fourth place with a 3 nothing win over Reading. Uh, Reading, from, r- remember I told you from uh, the parking lot of the Blues matches, I met someone who is a uh, is a massive Reading supporter, so had a little bit of talk with him online. Uh, apparently, they are in the middle of a takeover. So, all the finances that kind of fucked them Go, last their year owners were fucking terrible, and they're in the midst of a takeover. So you have a feeling once they get that takeover done, they'll figure out a way, and they'll be getting right, right the back up to the championship where they belong. It's maybe occasionally they go up to the prem, but for the most part, this is a 10th place team in the championship. That's what they should it has be. been for a long time, and that's yeah. what they should be. Right. So I would imagine we, we, it's get the sale done. And then from there, you can Do you remember on. when Petr Cech fractured his skull? Yep. That was an Irish uh, Reading player that did it, mm-hmm. if you remember correctly. All right. And then uh, Wigan is on the board. They got a one nothing win over Crowley Town. Good for Ben. Yeah. Because he's from Wigan. Mm-hmm. Supports him, yeah. obviously, other than the team he actually works for. Right. But it's still a rugby town, and it doesn't t- surprise me they've taken this long to get off the mark. <laughs> Speaking of uh, be Ben's other love, Aki got worked in League Two, three to one to Newport. They currently sit in twenty second place. So remember, only twenty third and twenty fourth go down. Yeah, th- that's that's bad for for Aki. Uh, for those that don't know, obviously there's some new people on. We should probably explain who Ben is. Uh, ben K is the groundskeeper uh, at uh, Accrington Stanley, mm-hmm. formerly of Chorley FC, yep. uh, where he rose to uh, English and wider worldwide soccer community uh, kind of lore right. as the groundskeeper that was able to keep the pitch unfrozen for uh, Tottenham's visit to Chorley. It was uh, Derby County they beat. And then the next week, the next round, they lost to uh, Wolverhampton. Oh, it was Wolves. That's yeah. right. Yeah. yeah. Oh, no. But it was yes, Derby County correct. was the one that they kept it unfrozen for. And they won that game in the uh, the third round of the FA Cup too. But they they are a uh, a team that is well non league sixth or seventh mm-hmm. tier easily. Mm-hmm. Um, and but Ben was pictured uh, with a uh, a very clear coffee mug filled with Guinness. Mm-hmm. I'm sure is the as the lore goes. Um, 
sleeping on the field with a hair dryer in his hand and space heaters around to keep the pitch yep. unfrozen, basically. Yep. And they built a tent around the place and yep. the whole nine. Anyway, uh, he um, was kind enough to give us an interview back in the day. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have glommed on to, we loved Accrington Stanley anyway. As one a, of the original 12. As a club, one of the original 12, but also, as I always say, and I have to reiterate, the Leighton Orient of the North. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, where everyone's second club in London is Leighton Orient. Everyone's second club up north is Accrington Stanley. And for some reason, still felt the need to release a commercial in the mid-90s that goes, we're Accrington Stanley. Hmm. And the person replies something along the lines of, who's that? Who's who's Accrington Stanley? Exactly. exactly. Yeah. <laughs> it's the kid drinking milk. He goes, you know what? One day I'm going to grow up big and strong and be a striker for Accrington Stanley. Who's Accrington Stanley? Exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, but everybody fucking does know the club. So the, mm -hmm. that's where where this comes from, just so you know. Um, and it's a shame to see this happen, uh, especially uh, Newport County uh, and their potato potato patch, patch of a pitch field, that yeah. we've, we've seen uh, many times now uh, in the recent FA Cup. Uh, that is edition. hosted not one, but two monster truck rallies. Yeah. <laughs> That's very important to exactly know. Exactly right. And uh, the Dons got a win, which I know we're not too terribly happy about, but uh, they are out of the cellar and the cellar is now held by, we know their name is Morkum, but that's not what we call them. Shrimp's out for Macombi, man. <laughs> Shrimp's out for Macombi. <laughs> They're in last place right now. We can't have that. Not Macombi. <laughs> Not the shrimps. And again, with new people joining in, the inside joke is Dick's out for Harambe <laughs> that showed up on that overhead sign on an American highway, and Morcombe is spelled the same mm -hmm. suffix. Yep, Morcom. It's Morcom, and they have a shrimp on there. <laughs> they are the shrimps, and it is a shrimp on their uh, crest. And we're so, white, so, so get your shrimps out for Morcombe. Shrimps out for Morcombe, <laughs> baby. Uh, finally, the League Cup is... Well, uh, excuse me. Yes. Pardon so, me. Yes, yes. You skipped over my natural rival. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Gillingham's still in first. Fuck Gillingham. Yeah, just in, in Bradford. Bradford City sits at uh, at uh, in second place as well. Good for them, but uh, fuck they, Gillingham. They beat, um, I forget who it was they beat. They beat somebody decent, so. And I have a beef too. with the most boring town in England, yeah. <laughs> and that is Gillingham. Gillingham, you mean the Gills, even though it's, they Gills. call them Gills. Yeah. I hate, I hate <clears throat> Gillingham. All right. Gillingham. Finally, More the like League Cup, the League Cup is this Tuesday and Wednesday. <laughs> a few notable matches. Uh, now, uh, neither Villa or Arsenal are playing because they are in European spots, so they get to sit out this round. We get a bye. Um, right off the bat, uh, Everton hosts Doncaster, which was the match we played last year in the League Cup, and it's the match that we won to kickstart things a little bit for us. Um, I see a 2-0 no loss. And Doncaster was... <laughs> At the time when we played them, dead last in the league, and they were up on us one nothing for most of the game. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it took it took a late game winner from uh, from looks, uh, Beto. Everything looks smashing. Exactly. Can't uh, wait. Tranmere, um, you know everybody's favorite uh, Liverpool Liverpoolian team. club. Yep, yeah. uh, especially uh, good old uh, Dino. That was his team, right? Uh, Mike Deans. Yep. Yeah, uh, they head to Leicester. Uh, Wolves host Burnley. That should be a pretty decent one. And then there are two all-prem fixtures. West Ham get the cherries at home, and Forest will host Newcastle. I think West Ham win, and honestly, I think Forest have a good shot. Yeah, agreed, agreed. I wouldn't be surprised. I think if Newcastle's going to rest players, especially with their injury record from last season. <laughs> They've already got the Fabian Shaw red card. Mm -hmm. Don't fuck it up in the League Cup. <laughs> Again, huh. now that you're fit, like able to play again, like so you're gonna sit. And they've made it to the semis, semis or the finals in the last two years. So I think mm -hmm. they're gonna, you know, you. How do you? What's a surefire way to get into Europe? Win a fucking cup. Yeah, but I, I, I think what I'm saying is I think Newcastle is gonna rest players because I think okay. they're worried about the league. Heard. Fair enough. Uh, you know, and then Fabian Shar being an idiot. I got you. I got He's you. also taken his suspension and uh, retired from international football. Did oh, oh no shit. No, I didn't yeah, see that. He did. uh, I would say um, I, I fancy Burnley to beat Wolves. Wolves aren't off to a particularly great start. Uh, Burnley is, and I think Burnley would love to have a go against a uh, against the former Premier League side. Yeah, I don't, I don't uh, unfancy that. 
Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, so although they do have to travel to the Molyneux, so, you know, that might that might end up proving to be a little uh, tough. But uh, I mean, apparently, uh, again, according to Matawake, it is this town is shit. Yeah. <laughs> I uh, just terrible. note I did say parting words this time, not party words. So, uh, yeah. but if should you have party words, by all means, say party words. <laughs> Fucking get them down, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Blackout drunk, fall upstairs. I, I have nothing. <laughs> Break a uh, foot. Yeah, and nobody that I've seen uh, over the last ten days has been a, a particular dickhead uh, in the championship yep. either. So. Agreed. Agreed. Yeah. All right. Very good. Next up is injury time, and that's where we're going to uh, preview the weekend's action. We'll talk a little bit about our fantasy league and uh, the beers that we're drinking as well. And should somebody want to find injury time, Mr. Graham, how they go about doing it? One last time. It's patreon.com forward slash D football show. Just sign up. It's at one $5 tier. You get all the extra stuff that we do, uh, which is a lot of fun extra content. So check it out. And, uh, of course, be sure to check out our TikTok channel uh, all throughout the weekend. We do halftime check-ins. We talk about the games throughout the, the, the weekend as well. Uh, great plates to get content from us we also mel breaks down the entire show into video and has eh, you know, okay. not do that anymore she does the whiskey <laughs> segment for us and a few other fun things mel will pull out some uh, specific lots clips. lots of shots of us doing malort uh in the in the wild and uh there's some interviews with some uh players and stuff and just fun things so yeah, go the, check it out the other thing is sometimes if i'm on halftime check-in duty Depends if I'm running kids around somewhere. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I've got two soccer age playing kids. Uh, oh, by the way, EFL exclusive. Let's make people listen to it, right? Mm-hmm. Tegan made varsity. Woo! Holy shit. Yeah. Has a very real chance of being the starter as a freshman. Wow. wow. Yeah. Fucking dope. <laughs> Get in, girl. Come on. Well done. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah, the proud papa yeah. here. Love it's very pretty that. good, um, but yeah. So check check all that shit out. That was we, easy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we did. She only started playing goalkeeper a year ago. Yeah, remember? exactly. Um, but we yeah. So it's that kind of shit we get into on the extras. Uh, uh, check it out. It's a lot of fun. It really is a lot of fun. Excellent. All right. Till and next injury time, especially because we're kind of yeah. drunk. <laughs> yeah. Till next week, everybody. Good night.